So most of the work this week involves a quick look at a reaction called a redox reaction. And the reason we're just touching on this is that some of you may plan to take higher level courses like IB Bio or IB Environmental Systems and Societies. And if that's the case, redox plays a really important role in biochemical reactions. So it's important to understand what the process of redox reactions is. And once you get the hang of it, it's not super difficult. So what are redox reactions? Redox reactions are chemical reactions in which at least two of the elements involved in the reaction change their oxidation state. Um, what that means is it's their electric charge. So a species in the reactants may have a different electrical charge in the products. And if that's the case, this reaction is considered a redox reaction. Um, how you determine oxidation state? Well, let's take a look at the compound H2O. If you remember, all compounds have to be electrically neutral. So if this compound is H2O, we know that oxygen with six electrons is gonna have a minus two charge. Hydrogen with one valence electron is gonna have a plus one charge. So we say the oxidation state of hydrogen is plus one, and the oxidation state of oxygen is minus two. That was a very brief and easy example. Although it seems this easy, there are a set of rules that will help you. So the first thing is, and you gotta go in order when doing this, if you see any uncombined atom or diatomic gas, the charge on the oxidation state is automatically zero. So if I give you Fe, don't scramble searching the periodic table looking for iron where it sits, what its charge is. As long as I don't tell you the charge, you have to just assume that that um, atom on alone is zero, all alone is zero. The oxidation state, the second rule says the oxidation state of any uncombined monoatomic ion. So if I give you Ca2 plus or I give you Br minus, that's going to be equal to the charge on that ion. So I've already told you the charge, therefore that's the oxidation state. In a compound, the oxidation state of the more electronegative atom, remember if you have the periodic table, and I'll quickly draw periodic table right here. As you go across the periodic table, electronegativity goes from francium, which is the weakest, all the way to fluorine, which is the strongest. So fluorine is the most electronegative. The um, more electronegative the atom, the more it overrides the oxidation state. Oxygen is always negative two unless it's bonded to fluorine or peroxide like in H2O2. Hydrogen is always plus one unless it's forming a hydride with a metal. All compounds are neutral, and the sum of the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion are equal to the charge on that ion. So we'll do a couple examples and you can go through these. So let's start with this first one. The first one is O2. So we go to rule number one, is this an uncombined atom or diatomic gas? It is, it's a diatomic gas. The oxidation state is zero. Um, MnO4, we gotta find all of these. So this is a compound. Um, oxygen is more electronegative, so we're just going to leave that as is. O is minus 2, and then we can solve Mn. If there's four minus 2s, that means Mn has to be plus 8 for the compound to be neutral. So Mn is plus 8. It's just like a puzzle. And CaF2, F is automatically going to be minus 1. There's two of them, which means Ca is 2 plus. So we say... F is minus one, CA is plus two. In H2O2, this is the weird one. It is a peroxide, so hydrogen is going to take precedence. So if hydrogen is plus one, then O is minus one. This is the tricky one. We say H is plus one, we have to do H first. O is minus one, this is rule number four. So we normally do oxygen unless it's H2O2. In NH3, hydrogen is going to take precedence, so it is going to be plus one. Um, and there's three of them, which means that to counteract that, N is going to be minus three. This is a tricky one because it's written backwards, but as long as you remember H is plus one, you're in good shape. So H is plus one, N is minus three. And if you look at N of the periodic table, it does make that negative three ion. This one, this next one, is the backwards one. This is a metal hydride. So there's your metal aluminum bonded to hydrogen. So you have to do the metal first. Aluminum is going to be a plus three. 
which means the hydrogen is going to be minus 1. So in this case, this is backwards. H is minus 1. Aluminum is plus 3. That's the metal hydride. That's kind of rule number um, 5 in our list. And then finally, Cr2O7. We know O is minus 2. 7 of them makes 14. The total, however, on this compound is negative 2, which means that instead of getting to negative 14, you have to get to negative 12, or sorry, to get to 12, which means that Cr would be plus 6. So we say Cr is plus 6, oxygen is minus 2. And once you get the hang of it, it's not super difficult to figure out the charges, as long as you really know the negative 2s, the 1s, and the zeros. The rest is just basic addition. So now that we know about oxidation states, we can talk about redox reactions themselves. In a redox reaction, substances change oxidation states from the products to the reactants. So an example of this is the reaction of solid sodium metal and chlorine gas, which forms solid table salt, which is sodium chloride. Because sodium is by itself, remember, it's just a solid element by itself, it's going to have an oxidation state of zero, as is chlorine because it's a diatomic gas. When they form a compound, though, sodium is going to have an oxidation state of plus 1, and chlorine is going to be minus 1. That's how the ionic compound works. So you can see that both species, the sodium and the chlorine, changed their oxidation state as they went from the reactants to the products. This means this is a redox reaction, and we have some fancy names for this. In a redox reaction, we have a process of reduction and we have a process called oxidation. If you put those words together and you can see them, we have redox. So reduction is the process of gaining an electron. So you go from positive to negative or less positive. So you kind of lose numbers in your oxidation state. Oxidation is the process of losing an electron. So you go from negative to positive, or you just get less negative. Okay, the way you remember which is which is just Leo the lion goes ger, which stands for lose electrons, oxidation, gain electrons, reduction. So what happens in a redox reaction is that one element gets oxidized, and another element gets reduced. Remember, we're not gaining or losing matter because of the law of conservation of mass. So the electrons have to go from one element to the other. Because both processes happen simultaneously at the same time, we say the process is called reduction oxidation, or redox for short. There are two other vocab words that get tricky here. The substance that caused the reduction is called the reducing agent. In other words, this substance cause something to gain electrons. Because this substance caused something else to gain electrons, it lost electrons and got oxidized. So the reducing agent is oxidized. On the other hand, the substance that caused an oxidation to happen is called the oxidizing agent. It had to lose electrons, or sorry, it had to gain electrons so that something else could lose electrons. So the oxidizing agent is reduced. So they're kind of like pairs. Best so the best way to practice this is really through practice problems. So we have this redox reaction, and it says, what's the oxidation state if K in the reactants and K in the products? So it's easiest if you just write their oxidation states over their heads. So K is by itself here, so it's going to be 0. And in the products, it's going to be plus 1, because it makes plus 1 ions, and that just makes sense for KBr. So what's the oxidation state of bromine in the reactants? Bromine is zero because it's a diatomic gas. And in the compound, it's minus one to balance out the potassium. So did they change? So we know their oxidation states. We've got those both checked off. The next question says, is this a redox reaction? The answer is yes. Why? Because the substances changed oxidation states. Potassium went from zero to plus one, and bromine went from zero to minus one. So now we have to do this part. What is being reduced? So remember, Leo the lion goes ger. What is being reduced gained electrons. It got more negative. So Br was reduced. What was the reducing agent? What causes this? That was potassium. What's being oxidized? So we have oxidation, which means it lost electrons. Potassium got more positive. It lost electrons. Potassium was oxidized. 
what caused this, the bromine, so therefore bromine is the oxidizing agent. So let's try the second problem, and this is a little bit more challenging. We have the decomposition of potassium chlorate into potassium chloride. So let's start with the one we know, um, which is oxygen. Oxygen is always going to be minus 2. And just so we keep track, there's three oxygen, so that's going to be minus 6 total. It's not the oxidation state, but it's going to help us later. Then we, have case, then we have oxygen on this side. Oxygen on this side is definitely zero because it's a diatomic gas. Now we have to figure out K and Cl. And together, K and Cl have to give us plus 6. So the question is, what's the charge on K and what's the charge on Cl? And the answer is we don't know. So we have to go through our rules. And this isn't about a diatomic gas. It doesn't uncombine ion. But rule number 3 says that in a compound, the oxidation state of the more electronegative atom will be the same as the charge equal to the charge of that ion. In this case, chlorine is the more electronegative atom. So chlorine is always going to form minus 1, which means potassium has to be plus 5. In the compound, though, KCl, if chlorine is minus 1, potassium is plus 1. So notice that potassium changes its charge and oxygen changes its charge. So this is a redox reaction. And then we go to Leo the lion that goes ger what lost electrons, so I'm oh, sorry, what gained electrons, so it was reduced? Well, potassium went from plus 5 to plus 1. It got more negative, so potassium was reduced. And what did it? It had to be oxygen. That's the other thing that changed. So what was being oxidized? Oxygen lost electrons, which means potassium was the one that caused it. It was the oxidizing agent. The other way we can write redox reactions is through half reactions. Um, we have the reduction half reaction and the oxidation half reaction. If you get into some very advanced chemistry, you'll see this a lot. Um, so, for example, if you look at the easier of our two examples of sodium plus chlorine gas gives you sodium chloride, the oxidation half is going to be neutral sodium, which is a solid, becoming sodium ion plus an electron. And the reduction half is going to be the opposite, neutral chlorine gaining an electron to become chlor the chloride ion. And these are just the half reactions. It's not a lot you need to know, but I just wanted to briefly introduce you to these in case you see them later on in your science career. So this is it, guys. The last week of new material for distance learning. What do you have to do? You have a problem set on Redox. I'm going to give you the answer key afterwards, but I do want to see if you get this or not. So there's a problem set on Redox. Um, there's going to be a quiz to answer your to put your answers in. Um, that's what you need to do to get credit. Um, I'll show you the answer key right there. So that's your pass for the week right there. And then there's a set of notes and a very short quiz on organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is very easy and straightforward, at least at the level you need to know for this class. So therefore, we're just going to do a very, very, very brief like five-question quiz just to see if you got it. That's the other thing you need to do for credit. Um, the only other thing I do want to mention is that we actually have class next Thursday. I believe it's June the 4th, and it's at a weird time. It's at like 1130. You are expected to be there, okay? So we're going to do a quick culminating activity. This is the one time I expect you to show up. We're just going to kind of wrap the course. I'm going to wish you a merry summer, and that'll be the end of it. So... If you guys have any questions, shoot me an email. Otherwise, I will see you on Wednesday at the usual time of 1210.